Now, there are already gene-edited products being sold. There's this oil that's being sold to restaurants, Cebus, and it's canola oil where they used genetic engineering to change it and they're labeling it as non-GMO. Because they're claiming that GMOs are only when you transfer genes between species. But they only edited the gene within the species. So it's not what we consider, their definition is not what we consider correct. It's not what the European Union considers correct. It doesn't, it's not what the official documents in the United States correct. But they're going to say, we're just going to call it non-GMO. So it's already on the market. Gene drives. How many people have heard of gene drives? Raise your hand. Gene drives. Only just about three of you. Normally, when, you, when a mother and father produce offspring, the genes get div divvied up so that half of your offspring get one trait and the other half get another trait, and then when the offspring marry and reproduce and produce kids, then the game, there's another dilution. It happens quicker with fruit flies. With gene drives, you genetically engineer so that your gene ends up on both sides of your chromosomes. It ends up so that when you give birth, all of the offspring have the trait, but you also <clears throat> they also have the genetic engineering mechanism in their genes, which does the same kind of genetic engineering in them so that when they give birth, then all of their offspring have the trait, and then all of their offspring have the trait. So instead of breaking it up like it is on the, on the slide here, you can see that all of the offspring at the bottom have the, the inheritance of what you've created. I was at a conference in the uh, UN Conference on Biodiversity, the Convention on Biological Diversity, and there was a group that was trying to push gene drives to wipe out rats from certain islands because they, had, they were invasive species. So let's create the gene drives and kill all of the rats. Maybe they'll produce just sterile males or maybe just males. Now, how did the rats get there? In the hulls of ships. If those rats that were getting the gene drive were ending up in hulls of ships, then it could end up on other places and other islands and other continents, and we could wipe out a species. What happens to the ecosystem? Or what happens to the ecosystem if the gene drive mechanism transfers to another rodent or to another mammal or to a different species altogether, a different kingdom? Or what happens if your genetic engineering changes and it doesn't do what you're, it's supposed to do, like the mosquitoes, didn't kill it all, but makes the animals somehow more aggressive or more dangerous? We're playing with nature in a way that is intentionally vast in time and space, and in a way that has a level of arrogance that surpasses what we could have even thought of before. This is a picture of a farm that has all the different plans that are currently being considered for gene drives, from mosquitoes to corn to trees, all these different things. Are, there's groups that are considering how we can permanently alter nature and all the future species to better fit within our industrial agricultural model. This is the thinking. There's even people that have trying to have considered genetically engineering out the mothering instinct from cows and livestock so that when you separate their children, they don't get upset. So instead of structuring agriculture or to fit nature, they're trying to redesign nature to fit industrial agriculture. 